Good morning. I would like to share this important message with each one of you, hoping that it will encourage you during the time of crisis like this. The title is Ask, Seek, and Knock. It's found in Matthew chapter 7, verses 7 to 8. Jesus said, Ask, and it will be given to you. Seek, and you will find, knock, and will be opened to you. For everyone who asks receive, and he who seek find, and to him who knock will be open. You see, Jesus has just started his ministry. He was baptized in Jordan. He received the anointing of the Spirit. He got affirmation from the Father as his beloved son. And then he went to the, the desert for, and fasted for 40 days and was tempted by the devil. But he passed the test. And then he called few disciples to whom he can teach and be part of the ministry. And the Bible says that in Matthew 4, verses 23 to 25, Jesus went out throughout Galilee, teaching in the synagogue, preaching the good news of the kingdom, and healing every disease and sickness among the people. News about him spread all over Syria, and people brought to him all who were ill with various diseases. Those suffering severe pain, the demon possessed, those having Caesar, and the paralyzed, and he healed them. Large crowd from Galilee, from Decapolis, from Jerusalem, Judea, and the region across Jordan followed him. There was no hall or rooms enough to accommodate, accommodate the multitude that came to hear him teach. Therefore, he went up to the mountain, and when he had sat down, his disciples came to him, and he began to teach them. And as the crowd gathered around to listen to his wonderful preaching, we call this particular sermon, The Beautitude. One lesson that Jesus wants to teach in that particular sermon is that of trusting God. Trust in the promises of God. Trust in the power of God. Trust that God can supply all our needs. Trust that God can change lives and bring revival and reformation. In Revelation chapter 4, verse 3, it says, A rainbow, assembling an emerald, encircled the throne of God. In Revelation 10, verse 1, The mighty angel that came down from heaven was robed in a cloud with a rainbow above his head. His face was like the sun, and his legs were like fiery pillars. It was a description of Jesus Christ in his glory. After the flood, God sent a rainbow in the clouds. And he said to Noah, This is a sign of a covenant that I will establish between me and all the lives on earth. The question is, what was that covenant that promised that God made between himself and those that live on earth? That is found in Genesis 8, verse 22. It says, as long as the earth endure, seed time and harvest, cold and heat, summer and winter, day and night will never cease. Indeed, it was a covenant 
that God will provide for the sustenance and the needs of mankind. He is called Jehovah Jireh, God who provides. One of my favorite writers, he wrote this very beautiful text. He says, the rainbow round the throne is an assurance that God is true, that in him is no variableness, not a shadow of turning. We have sinned against him and undeserving of his favor. Yet he himself has put in our lips the most wonderful of plea. He says, do not abhor us for thy name's sake. Do not disgrace the throne of the glory. Remember, break not thy covenant with us. When you come to him, confessing our unworthiness and sin, he has pledged himself to give heed to our cry, to honor the honor of his throne, is at stake for the fulfillment of his word to us. With the coronavirus has become a pandemic, thousands of people have lost their job and are wondering how to pay the rent and utilities or even to buy food when they can't go to work. Where can they get help when the last dollar has been spent, to whom they can turn to when everything is gone. In Genesis chapter 22, we read about the steadfastness of Abraham as God's covenant to make him a father of a great nation through his son Isaac, the child of promise, a child of Michael, a gift from God. Abraham abhorred the thought of sacrificing the life of his son as a burnt offering. Yet he looked at God's faithfulness to his promise. Abraham was tested to the uttermost when he raised his hand and ready to sacrifice his son Isaac. But God stopped him. As substitute was given, God provided a miracle. A ram was caught in a ticket as a substitute sacrifice. So Abraham named the dead place, the Lord will provide. As it is today, on the mount of the Lord, it shall be provided. God is a God that provides. God the provider, Jehovah Jireh, gave his son. Because that son is a promise that God will sacrifice to save you and me. He preserved his promise to make Isaac the great nation. He acted and responded to Abraham's faith in this provision. God is Jehovah Jireh, the provider of all goods and perfect gifts. The Apostle James wrote, every good and perfect gift is from above and come down from the Father of light with whom there is no variation or shadow of turning. Therefore, Jesus taught his hearer, us, and will be given to you. And you will find when you seek, and when you knock, it will be opened to you. For everyone who asks receives, and he who seeks will find, and to whom who knocks will be opened. God does not change. He stands behind every promise in the Bible 
And therefore we need to ask, to seek, and to knock. And He will reward us with gifts that we never dream of. The greatest of all gifts is the gift of Jesus Christ, who brings salvation and eternal life to those who receive Him as Lord. And so my challenge is, let's take the courage with confidence to ask, to seek, and to knock. And you will be surprised that God will supply your needs in ways you can never think of. Let's pray. The Lord will thank you for your promise to provide for our needs, our daily needs. At time of crisis like this, when your people cry to you, may you hear them. Thank you, Lord, for being faithful to your promise. In Jesus' name, Amen.